everybody, I'm Trevor Horn. This is the third and final segment of BVRC Live here for uh, October 18th. It's week 10 of the high school football season, which means it's this week and next week, and then the playoffs. We're brought to you here by Grapevine MSP and Motor City Buick GMC. I am joined, as always, by Josh Bennett and John Metis. Gentlemen, hi, how are you? Hi. Hello. Josh, thanks for coming out on your day off. Yeah, of course. Appreciate it. Oh, it's Bennett's day off. Yeah, yeah. some scheduling conflicts and... You know, Josh doesn't want to miss the show. Wow. I don't. Like, yeah. He's I, dedicated. Just like I don't want to miss this show. I'm leaving, going back home right after this, but I couldn't miss. The show must go on, Me right, Me too, yeah. Yeah. I could have done it by myself. <laughs> go nope, nope, nope. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> we'll go get tacos. Yeah. Take them home to Kristen. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Uh, so, I'm, now I'm hungry. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's uh, let's get right into it. Uh, let's... Got a lot of games. We got a lot of playoff implications coming up this week. We'll get into most of those. Let's start off quickly with the eight-man games this week. First up, this game will be to uh, Saturday at six p.m. tomorrow night. Kings Christian at Lamore at Fraser Mountain. Kings Christian two and five, one and three in league play, while Fraser Mountain's one and seven still winless in league play. Kings Christian, uh, I've gotten a victorious thirty-five nineteen. Yeah, winless in league play probably remain that way. Forty-two nineteen Kings Christian. Yes. Yep. And we got two more eight-man games. Here's this one. Josh and I will have a little conversation quickly about it. Cayuma Valley at Maricopa. Both teams winless this season. Um, I picked Maricopa to win this one, 27-20. Josh thinks I am flipping nuts. Yeah. Uh, Maricopa has scored twice all season. Uh, So that's four shutout losses for them if you keep count. And one of those shutout losses was a 104 to zero loss. Ooh. So uh, that's not a basketball score. It's not. It's I don't know if that's any score really. That's insane. That is. So so I'm going to take Cayuma Valley, uh, 27 to six. You know, Josh makes a compelling argument. <laughs> oh, he does. <laughs> He's probably right. And that loss for Cayuma Valley, 104 to nothing, was against this team coming up, Coast Valley, Coast, Coast Union, Union, excuse me, out of Cambria. They're the team that put up 104. Yeah. You know, we talked about the desert uh, basketball team last year putting up 168 against Fraser Mountain. Did the section look at Coast Union for this 104 to nothing win in eight man? Probably not. Probably not because it's eight man. Yeah, but you still got to question that. So Coast Union at home against Desert tomorrow tomorrow night. Desert two and five. Coast Union two and five. Um, I've got Coast Union just based on the fact. Yeah, well, coaching is 104 points. Yeah, well, coaching is two and five, but they're also more importantly two and zero oh in league. So, mm-hmm. I mean, and they've actually played a couple eleven man games this year. Yeah, exactly. Wow. So, yeah, I think Coast Union should take care of business. Fifty six thirty three. I've got a twenty seven nineteen. You're Coast right. Union. Okay. All right, let's move into eleven man football. Burroughs at on the road. Excuse me, in Hesperia against Sultana. Uh, we talked about winnable games here in the last two weeks of the season for Burroughs. And uh, I thought maybe we would be talking about this week. I just don't know. But I looked back at the numbers. Burroughs won 11 games last year. They went to the D9 Southern Section Championship game last year. But they graduated 9% of their passing offense. 87% of their rushing attack is gone. And now they're only averaging, you know, just I, it's just under 10 points a game in the first eight weeks of the season. Yeah. And I just don't know if it's going to get any better. Probably not. I mean, if you want a comparison team for a more local team, probably look at Chavez. They went 0-9 last year, and now this year they're a little better, you know, a little more experienced. And I think that will be the case for Burroughs next year, but for now, Well, and that, it, if you're going to really look at the comparison with Chavez, you got to look at the fact that, um, you know, they, they went two, back-to-back 10 win seasons in 2014-2015. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 2016, and they went to the semifinals in D4. Mm-hmm. And then they, they graduated 32 dudes, much like Burroughs graduated 32 dudes last year. Yeah, had a and down think, year last year. And they year. just had a down year, and now they're they're starting to recover yep. because you get the youth movement coming up. You're probably playing a bunch of sophomores and freshmen mm-hmm. and juniors, and those guys are only going to get better. But it's a tough year this year for the for the Borough Burroughs. Yeah, this is their down year, yep. uh, just kind of – Play as the best you can out there. That's all I can really say. So I've got Sultana win this one, 28-13. I'm going to go 35-8 Sultana. Agreed. Okay. 
Let's move it on in the High Desert League. Cal City undefeated. Uh, they got a big matchup next week against Bishop. That likely could be two 3-0 and teams in league play. But first, the Ravens have, have to get through Rosamond this week. I think they're going to be able to do it. I've got Cal City winning this one 28-14. Yeah, uh, last week, a uh, game against L.A. Brentwood was canceled because of that big lightning storm. And unlike all the other league games around Southern California last week, they had to replay those games. And with the playoffs coming up in two weeks, there's no chance to do it on a Friday night between yeah. now and then. So they had to get all those games. This was a non-league game. you got to figure get, going all the way down from L.A., to Cal City, back-to-back mm. -back days. There probably wasn't a bus ready for that, so that's why they had to completely cancel this game. Yeah, and honestly, probably a silver lining for them because, I mean, probably they would have gotten blown out. Yeah, they were losing in the game when it got canceled, so now they're still four and three. A winnable Roseman game brings them to five and three, which guarantees them a over five hundred record for them. So, and I think they'll get the job done here, forty-two thirty, to set up that match next week. Yep. Yep. Thank you for your insight, John. <laughs> So glad you're on the show. Appreciate you. <laughs> you told me not to talk a lot, so <laughs> this is what you're getting. Fair enough. <laughs> I get what I wish for. Yeah. Mm, can I have a million dollars? Can I win the, the Mega Million tomorrow night? Yeah, no kidding. I don't really want to have that much money. I really don't. You can give it to me. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll take some off your hands. All right. Uh, final High Desert ga uh, game this week. Bishop at Boron. Like I said, Bishop 2-0 and in league play. Boron maybe 2-1 and in league play, but they've been so inconsistent all year long. That's why I look at Bishop, and they're hopefully they're not looking ahead to the Cal City game next week and trying to take care of business, but I think Bishop wins this one. The Broncos 33-20 over the Bobcats. Yeah, I mean, looking at Boron, lost to Cal City, uh, struggled. I mean, they won, but they struggled against Kern Valley and Roseman, so you got to think uh, Bishop wins here, and I have them 34-21. So. Okay, yeah. all right, let's move on. East Yosemite League. It has not been an easy one for Delano. We talked about how no. good Kennedy's been. Um, Delano, really a team that's struggling here. And it's not really fair when you think about the first two weeks of league play. They had to get, go against Tulare Union and Tulare Western. Two blowouts, 56 nothing, 52 nothing. Those are two the top two teams of Division Two, yep. and now they get one of the top teams of Division Four this week at home against Porterville, a team that was six and zero to start the season before they had to go up and play Tulare Union, Tulare Western. But the Panthers playing much better football this season. It's going to be a tough one for Delano. Hopefully, they can get a win next week against Mission Oak out of Tulare in the regular season finale because they're probably not going to get it this week. I got Porterville winning this one, 34-14. Yeah, I mean Porterville's two losses against those two teams, and other than that, they've been solid the yep. rest of the year so i mean it's kind of like you said it's just un just an unlucky season for everyone involved that's not tulare west and tulare union um yeah i got a favorite porterville in this one 38 14 there's they're just the better team here the clear third in the league yeah this is porterville's game yep okay so let's move into the SSL. We always talk about teams that, you know, are the feel-good stories. And there's always a few. East is obviously one. But I think Arvin's the other one. This team is 4-4 four and four this year. Uh, a win here in the next, you know, two weeks will be the first winning 500 record for the Bears since 2012. Yeah. And so when you look at what this program's been able to do this year, um, just two years removed from a you know an 0 and 10 season, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of good things happening for Arvin. Obviously, they've had to take some lumps against Shafter and Kennedy, but everybody's taking their lumps against Shafter and Kennedy. This yeah, year. and even mm -hmm. Wasco yep. too. Those are yep. three losses. I mean, yep. And then when you look at McFarland, you know f th their five wins, including their win over Taft, 13 to 12, for their first SSL win this year. Yeah. Um, you're looking at the bottom four, five teams in the bottom third, in the bottom. 15 or 18 in the central section yeah. according to Kyle Prep's uh, power rankings. And so they're winning the games that they're supposed to win. Yeah, I mean, it'll get them in the playoffs. It, I mean, yeah. I don't know how well they'll be in the playoffs, but they'll play. Yeah, so they're getting yeah. – McFarland is getting the wins. It's probably going to get them into a top eight or nine seed in Division Six. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, this is probably not going to be a winnable game for McFarland because this is not a game that they're favored in. Arvin – Running the ball quite well this year. Their defense is playing very well. I've got Arvin winning this one 28-12. Yeah, I have a little more 42-13. Arvin uh, seems to, when they can, have a more explosive offense. Um, and it's weird, too, because looking at the SSL, like even these, I don't want to say bottom-tier teams, but like they're 500 clubs and they're at the bottom of the league. Like mm -hmm. That's just incredible. It's It, it shows you the, the staying power yeah. that the SSL has this year uh, with Bakersfield moving out and McFarland moving in. It really does. Uh, bring a complete kind of competitive equity to the league. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I believe this is McFarland's final game, regular season game. Is it? I don't know. Yeah. Is yeah, it? it is. Okay. Yeah, they've mm -hmm. got to buy next week. Yeah. So uh, 
yeah, they'll finish 500 regardless, and Arvin will get at least that 500 record chance. So I'm going to take the Bears, 42-13. Yeah, I mean, I picked Arvin to beat Wasco, so I'm certainly picking him to win in this game. <laughs> hey, that was a close game. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They, so, they had a shot there. Yep. Uh, speaking of Wasco, they were on the road at Taft. Wasco 6-2 and two this year. They were 3-1 and one in league play. And barring a catastrophe here, we'll actually be tied for second place in league yep. with the, loser, you know, the, yeah. the loser of the Shafter-Kennedy game tomorrow night. And if so, that team ends up being Shafter, that makes the game a lot more interesting now. Yeah, Ooh, exactly, yeah. next week. So the longest standing rivalry in the state – um, gets even more interesting if Kennedy is able to win tomorrow night. Wasco, you think a team that runs the ball well, and mm-hmm. they do. I mean, they just ran rough shed last week uh, over Arvin. They had three guys rushing for over 100 yards, but they only put up four touchdowns. Still a close game. But yep. what really kind of has kept Wasco in the win column so much this year is predicated on their defense. Their oh, defense absolutely. Their yeah. teams off the board yeah. a lot this year. And, it's and really honestly, outside of the North game, they've been great the entire season. Yeah. And when you look at Taft, a team that is now has a six-game losing streak and nothing seems to be going right. And we thought, you know, during the preseason that Taft had kind of righted all of those issues that were going on in the locker room. And it, thinks, and it looks and appears that, you know, they're, they're falling right back into that again this yeah. year. So, you know, this is not going to be a winnable game for Taft by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, so. Wasco's not going to overlook the Wildcats, knowing the Shafters next week at home in the regular season mm-hmm. finale. Wasco wins this one, and I think pretty big. I've got a 52-7. Yeah, I'll take 56-6 Tigers. Wasco's been having a good season. Taft has not. Yeah, and basically, like you said, all that what we can say is hopefully they don't look past them yep. the next week and just take care of business this week. Okay, let's look at the big game this week, and that is Kennedy on the road at Shafter. Like we said, Ooh. we have the Thunderbirds up. Both teams are 8-0 in league – or, it's sorry, 4-0 in league play, 8-0 overall. Uh, both of them have come away with big non-league wins when you think that, mm-hmm. you know, Shafter beat North on the road, yep. they beat Highland on yep. the road. Kennedy – beat Liberty Venero Ranchos, which is one of the top D5 teams, still is. And so you look at these two teams and you look at two offenses that are kind of completely opposite, mm-hmm. but two defenses that are very strong. And I I think the two storylines for Shafter, the biggest thing is Kennedy has not seen an offense like this all year. No. The only other mm-hmm. team that throws the ball with any consistency that they've seen this year is Highland. Mm-hmm. And they shut them down. Yeah. yeah. Where, but the thing is, with Shafter, if they can't throw, they can run. If they can't run, they can throw. Exactly. you got to shut down both aspects. And then the biggest thing for Kennedy is the fact that they're going to have fresh legs in the fourth mm-hmm. quarter, where Shafter is almost every single one of their guys going both ways. Or like we talked with Mario Milan, you know, he's been able to gear his entire roster to one-way guys and allowing them to get rest during the game so they have fresh legs at their positions, yeah. whether it's Johnny Carrillo, a cornerback, or David Estrada, a quarterback. You know, they are – fresh and ready to go in the fourth quarter. And I think that's going to be the biggest advantage that they're going to have uh, in the playoffs as well. But tomorrow night, um, my biggest thing and the biggest kind of storyline that I see with this one is if Shafter is able to get up a couple scores early and keep that two-score lead late in the fourth quarter, Mm -hmm. that might be the biggest thing for Shafter to win this game is to score early and stay up early and stay up on Kennedy throughout the game because Kennedy, as great as a quarterback and leader as David Estrada is, he's only attempted 48 passes. Yeah, very, very one-dimensional offense, yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that because most teams at that level are. And they run the ball very well. They've got a very great O-line. Uh, exactly. Ivan Garza is a Pac-12 recruit right mm-hmm. now, and so they've got the they've got the personnel to run the ball well. Yeah, and they haven't needed to pass the ball, so there's no knock on them whatsoever. Mm-hmm. But the my biggest thing is I think Shafter does have that availability. They're at home; they get that whole feeling of being in their locker room in this big rivalry game. And I think that when it's all said and done, well, Shafter comes out on the end. I've got this one, 28 24. Your well, thoughts, Josh? Yeah, well, I mean, on top of that, they had the extra bye week to prepare, too, mm-hmm. whereas Kennedy had a game last week. So, um, yeah, I think the thing here is uh, Shafter, I mean, looking at their schedule, I mean, obviously they're tied for the lead in the SSL. They pretty much, if they wanted to, be in the lead in the SEYL if they wanted to. With the way they've been playing, I mean, they beat Shafter, or they beat North, they beat Highland. So, um, I think they played the tougher schedule c- compared to the two. They have the dual threat on offense. Uh, the defense has been pretty lights out. They haven't really been, but they haven't really been challenged this year as well. Whereas Kennedy, they've only given up one touchdown in league play, and that was a fourth quarter running clock touchdown by Chavez. Yeah, in the first yeah. league game. 
Mm-hmm. So we're talking about three consecutive games without giving up a score. Yeah, that's incredible. But, but, but that ain't happening tomorrow. No, no of course <laughs> not. But but then you look at Kennedy, um, I think on paper, if you want to compare it to the game, look at the Wasco game, you know, just Wasco had answers for their running game. They didn't put up the points. I mean, they still won probably with the fresh legs. Uh, and then I think it was like a 1914 it win. Was. Yeah, so, I mean, I, th- I think the thing here is, can Kennedy, re- I mean, they're going to run the ball. Shafter is going to be prepared for it. So are they able to adapt and adjust and, you know, when the inevitable happens? Because, I mean, they're not going to be able to run on them the whole game. And uh, their defense, I mean, they, they're going to have to just find a way to contain Alex Aguilar. I mean, he's the X factor, obviously. But uh, I got to favor the home team. I got to favor Shafter in this one, 28-27. And when the other thing is, too, John, before I give you your moment, is you got to limit the amount of touches that Alex Aguilar can yep. have as yeah. a quarterback. So for Kennedy, they've got to contain the clock. Mm-hmm. And I'm guessing that's probably where you were going to well, go. Well, yeah, that's exactly it. Like I think Shafter, like you mentioned before, needs to get some big plays, quick scores early. That way you don't give Kennedy the ball in a – one score game or a tie game in the fourth quarter where they can run, you know, Watch the thing too, however much time they want. 14 plays, on. yeah, take seven and a half minutes off the clock. Yeah. Well, well that's what a running offense does too. They eat up the clock. So, yeah. and gotta, they wear you down. Yeah. And yeah. with, you know, Shafter not having that many guys. But, and the thing that worries me a little bit with Shafter is just how none of their, they haven't had to have a fourth quarter game winning drive or anything like that. You know, they've been in all these blowouts. But because they don't have that many players, they've been, you know, it's not like Alex Aguilar has been sitting the second half of all these games. He's been no, he's playing. He's still out there. He's just yeah, he's the been playing yeah. full games. Yeah. So yeah. it's not like we're going to get to the fourth quarter and they're going to be absolutely like, oh, I haven't had to play in the fourth quarter. No, at and all that's this the thing year. is, we've yeah. seen that with other teams in the past where their guys don't play in the fourth quarter and when they get to it, they don't yeah. know what to do. Yeah. Like you said, I mean, mm-hmm. that's another you know, feather in the cap for Shafter is that because they don't have a lot of guys, they don't have a lot of backups, so their guys have to stand. But they're conservative in their offense mm-hmm. yeah. in the fourth, third and fourth quarter. Well, they so. have to be, but yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm taking Shafter. Okay. I guess you. I should make the pick. Yeah. yeah thank <laughs> you. Appreciate that. Okay, let's move into the SEYL. I can't um, wait for that game, though. It should be a good game. Yeah. Oh, completely. Um, Michael Doten is out for the season. The starting quarterback for North broke his leg last week mm. in the 21-16 to 16, 21-16? Yeah. loss to East. Um, so they're going to have to lean on Shannon Ferguson again at quarterback. Yep. Um, that's a bummer for North. But I don't really know that it's going to matter much this week. Uh, yeah, I don't think so. Miramonte quickly re- realized the first-year head coach and his coach uh, – uh, sorry – Christian Johnson, his coaching staff, quickly realizing that they just don't have the dudes yeah. this year to compete with the other teams in the SCYL. Because the, the top four in the SCYL are decent, mm-hmm. are really yeah. good. They're good football programs. And I think they're quickly realizing that it was great to get those two wins against high desert league opponents, but they're not competitive this week. It's going to be a competitive game for them next week against Foothill, but not mm-hmm. this week against North. So even without Michael Doten, you know, they've shown that they've been able to win without him when he was uh, ineligible first week of the season. and He's been injured and out um, at times this year. So, Well, if I remember correctly, I don't think he played that Foothill game, did he? He it, did not. Yeah, so, I mean, there's a comparison right there. Yep. Ferguson, the quarterback, against Foothill, and they just lit up the scoreboard. So, yeah. What was the game you were at where he went 10 for 10? West. Yeah, yeah, that's the yeah. Ten so it's West. not like he's incapable, but I mean, I, I, I would think that photo game is probably a comparison to this one. Yeah, so I've got North winning this one, 40 to 12. Yeah, uh, 48 to 6 stars. North. Yep. And then we talked about Arvin being one of the feel good stories this year. How about East? Four and four, three game winning streak. Uh, Boy, they, if only East figured it out earlier in the season. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I mean, who, who would have known? I mean, obviously you would have Yeah, lost to Chavez. Chavez yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. That Maybe something changes there. But here they are. They're 3-0 and in their first year in the SCYL. And, you know, they've got a legitimate shot to go undefeated. They've got Highland next week in the regular season finale. Yeah, and, I mean, a win here all but guarantees them at least a share. So. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, they're going to they're gonna win here. They're going to get at least a share of the league title. So they're going to have some kind of feather in their cap. Yeah. And so Richard Lahr really kind of turning the corner, and they had that great win against North last week, stay mm-hmm. undefeated. They're going to go 4-0 this week. I don't really think Foothill has a chance in this one. I've got East 42-6. to Yeah, uh, I'm going to go 27-7. I haven't really seen East put up a lot of points outside of that Golden Valley game. So I think it'll be a little less, but East wins. Give me East. Okay. And here's the big game this week in the SEYL South on the road at Highland. Both teams identical 5-3 and three overall, 2-1 and one in league play. A literal elimination game for the league title. Yeah. yeah, exactly. The loser here will not get a shot at the league title, you know, obviously barring some kind of collapse by East uh, tomorrow night against Foothill. Yeah. 
So you've got South and Highland battling for first place, probably second place in league play, depending. And, you know, the high, the Scots playing very well with Nick Salas, a quarterback, mm-hmm. in place of sophomore A.J. Cleveland, who is hopeful to come back for the playoffs. He's done well for them. South, their offense was great the first four weeks of the season. Uh, you know, they were putting up enormous points all year long, 46 yeah. and a half. Uh, then they got the good at the gas station. Exactly. So I don't know what happened. You know, <laughs> yeah. they lost to West 27 26. They only beat Foothill by two touchdowns. Uh, and they, then we saw the South of Old last week against Miramonte. So. Yeah, and they blew up Miramonte um, in a huge shutout win. Yeah. Um, but Highland, a team that I think, you know, this is a home game for them. They're playing well on both sides of the ball, they're able to run the ball. And something tells me that Highland's. Playoff experience from you know their eight no record mm-hmm. last year. Their guys are learning this year, and I got Highland in a close one, thirty five twenty eight. Yeah, I'm taking Highland too in a close one, thirty five thirty four. Uh, only thing is though, those seniors on South, that coaching staff, they haven't forgotten about last year. What happened in the game last Dude, year? Dude, that play, man. So I mean, going to this Kate game, Sakamoto and Amanda yeah. Miranda, holy cow. Uh, so I mean, yeah, going going to this game, I mean. Obviously, yeah, it's for league title implications and all that, but they, they have an extra chip in their shoulder. So, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if South comes out, you know, banging in early, you know, just. However. However. <laughs> it's uh, always a but. Yeah. Uh, Miramonte, obviously not the best uh, litmus test for offense, and South has been sputtering these past this past month, I guess, now. Yeah. Um, yeah, I got a I got to favor the home team just barely here. I don't think it'll end in a hail mary again, but right. uh, I I think Highland will hang on here and we'll get a game for you know probably the league title next week against East. Well, I've got South in this one. Like you mentioned, maybe the game last year is enough of uh, inspiration and motivation to kind of kickstart that. I mean, we know the South offense is capable. They just haven't been putting up the points recently. If you not including the Miramonte game, so maybe they get back to it and can do it against Highland. It's a competitive game. I love yeah. it. Teddy was at this game last yeah. year. He's going back to this game this year. There you go. He loves so his maybe scrap it will come down game. to a hail mary <laughs> He loves again. his scrap iron game. So Teddy have at it. Yeah. yeah. So let's move into the SYL. This one is for uh, you know last place really, if you will, in the SYL. Golden Valley winless this season where West is still winless in league play. West really dealing with injuries, whereas Golden Valley has dealt with a tiny roster, you know, pure lack of numbers all year long. And so, you know, it's a game where, you know, somebody needs a win really badly here. And I think that West has shown that they do have uh, talent on their side of the ball. And I think the Vikings hold out in this one. I've got 21-13. Yeah, yeah. Golden Valley's chance for a win was last week, and they couldn't get it done at the end uh, against Tajapi. Yeah, 7-6 seven, six seven, six loss, loss yeah. where they were actually leading in the second half. Yeah, they are up 6 nothing the majority of the game and just couldn't hang on. But uh, West, I mean, obviously dealing with numbers, but I think they still have the talent to beat Golden Valley here. I mean, they beat, they beat South. They, they do have some good wins on their resume, so I'm going to take West 38-6. Yeah, I think this is West and more of a score like Josh predicted than what you predicted. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> Just to be okay. more specific. Okay, so let me ask you guys both a question. Do either one of you have any answer for what is going on with Ridgeview this year? No. no. That's kind of what I was getting at. Yeah. Is that they've looked spectacular Well, at times. they're so talented. I yeah. had an answer until last week's game. What was it? That... Liberty and VHS are on another level, and Ridgeview isn't there yet. But yet, Ridgeview was not able to score an offensive touchdown last week in a 16 10 That's loss why. To BCHS. That's why I don't have an answer anymore. Was yeah. it that BCHS's defense is that good? I don't know. Or did just – I mean, I look at Taj, right, and I look at a guy who his sophomore year at BHS was the most electric football player in the mm-hmm. county. Yeah. And he just – and I'm not saying anything bad about Taj. He just doesn't – he and the offense just don't look right this year. I that's I wonder if it's a chemistry issue. Is it uh do they have too many playmakers where they just don't have enough balls to give around to the team? I mean Trevor doesn't look like he agrees. That's fine, but I mean we every week Really? Well, oh, every oh. week we look at the box score and we're like, Oh, why didn't this guy get that many touches? Why didn't get this guy get that many touches? Like sometimes it's like they don't have enough footballs to give around to the now, team. No, well, defensively they looked good. Yeah. You know, when you've got Dalen DeGraff Reed, you've got 
Taj Wright and you've got Elijah Alexander Williams in in the secondary. Not a lot of teams are going to be able to throw the ball on him. And BCHS really didn't. When you look at it, J- Jacob Moran had 183 something passing yards, but 137 of that came on two plays, including the game winner. Yeah, in the, sec- in the second touchdown. half. Yeah, yes. was... and the, both of them were second. It was a two nothing game and a half. Time. Yeah. Was... So both defenses, either both offenses were totally anemic, or both defenses were just playing great football. So yeah. Um, I obviously that's not going to be the case this week. They're no. probably going to blow over to Hatchby. Um, there will be no wind in this one because it won't be <laughs> into Hatchby. Yeah. They will blow right by him. Um, and I don't think we're going to get it answered this week. Obviously, we're going to no. get it more next week when they play Independence. We'll get into Independence in just a second. Mm-hmm. But I've got Ridgeview winning this one big, 42-7. But I don't think that this we're going to get any answers this week. And I don't know if we're going to get any answers about Ridgeview at all this year. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, I think it's just one of those seasons where it was just – Nothing clicked. I don't know, and I don't. I don't know how you fix that next year. If you guys are watching on Facebook right now, do you have any answers? Yeah, let me know, John. I've got Ridgeview too, but just the the same thoughts. They, I don't know. I've been. Uh, well, I mean, you you look, unimpressed. Yeah, I mean, well, you look at college teams and pro teams. You know, like on paper, this team looks good, and then just it doesn't click. Like I don't know. I think this is just one of those years. Yep. Okay. Um, your score. Oh, uh, fifty-five six Wolfpack. Yeah, he said Richie. Okay. Uh, and let's move on. The big game in the SSL. Uh, sorry, SSL. Sorry. Come on. BCA chips is in the SSL for years. So just chill, man. Not anymore. Yeah. Give it the time. So here's the big game in the <laughs> South Yosemite League. And if, you, if Shafter and Kennedy weren't both undefeated, this would be the biggest game this week. Yeah. Both teams are undefeated in league play. Independence in the first year under Tyler Shellhub. And if you haven't read the story that I wrote about Tyler Shellhub. So good. Thank you. So good. Give it a read. He is an incredible young man. He's 24 years old. He's overcome so many obstacles to get where he is, including his disability when he was paralyzed from the chest down when he was 16 years old. And everything that he's done and the amount of people that he's inspired is incredible. And what he's done with his football team is just as awe-inspiring. When you think about it, Independence won a school record seven games last year. Mm-hmm. And here they are, 6-2. and two. And if they were, and if they're able to beat BCHS, they will get at least a share of the league title. Yeah, again. Again, and then be able to win it outright next week against Ridgeview. Yep. So this is a game that really intrigues me. When you look at the big field of Christian offense, it didn't look all that great last week. With no. Independence, you know, they lean on their big three, and the big three is Sergio Borelli at quarterback, Malik Duluth, and Armani Denweed, mm-hmm. and they do great things, and they got. They've got great supporting cast across the board with this team, and they really do play great football. However, what I saw at a BCHS in person last week was a defense that is really solid, yeah. that is led by Tate Enigenberg. Was that close? Yeah, eh. Enigenberg. And then Ben Urosik, who really, I mean, just showed why he has a Pac-12 commit. Yeah. Because there was one play where he had that backside – pursuit on Justin Hinzo and he chased and chased the Ridgeview quarterback down and Justin Hinzo is not a slow man no he is not yeah so when I look at it that is the determining factor for me is the defense for BCH yeah. and as much as I like Tyler and what's going on with this with the, with the team this year I don't think that that's going to be the case this week I've got BCHS winning this one 27 21 I'm going to disagree with you. Please um, do. Yeah. Uh, honestly, Me too, by the way. I think the factor here is the Eagles' offense um, because these last couple of weeks in these tough games, they've been very, uh, for a comparison, Yankees-like where it's home run or nothing. Mm-hmm. And obviously paid off against Ridgeview, but hasn't paid off in some of these other games. And Independence is not a pushover team. They've been the class of the SYL for the past few seasons. And on their home turf, they got the new kids in the block coming into town trying to take over. And I think Independence is going to put their foot down and, you know, um, I, I mean, I don't think I don't think it'll be a blowout in any sense of the mean, but I think Independence will hang with them. I think uh, they'll um, I, I lost my words. That's OK. So Independence 3028. You're just thinking about that Red Sox one last night. I kind of am. Yep. Yeah, like Josh said, I mean, this is a, I think this is a pretty even game. This should be a good game no matter who wins it. Um, but it just I mean, when I look at the stats, when I look at all the facts, I'm like, okay, the, these are two even teams. Flip a coin, independence. Okay. All right. You guys both disagree with me. That's why we do this, right? Yeah. Okay. So we've got another one. This one, you know, is probably for last place in the SWYL Stockdale 
on the road at Frontier. Both teams winless in the SWIL. Frontier dealing with a lot of injuries, and Stockdale, yeah. the biggest factor here is one guy. Who is that? Evan Burkhardt. Thank you. Yeah. When you look at when he's not playing a BHS or Liberty, he is running wild and doing great things at offense since he moved over to quarterback third week of the season. I think that is the biggest determining factor in this one. Frontier is so banged up, and Evan Burkhart, when he has the ability to break loose and make plays, he does. Yeah, and that's he's been doing be, that, yeah. yeah mm-hmm. And that's going to be the biggest determining factor. I got Stockdale winning this one, 35-21. Yeah, uh, like you said, Frontier, very uh, same as West, just has the talent but just killed with injuries. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll take the Mustangs here, 34-20. Stockdale. Yep. Okay, we're going to talk about both of these games um, at length tomorrow night. we got about two minutes left. Let's get into these two games. The clock stopped. That's weird. It just out. totally stopped. Time out. Time out. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so Now we're just skipping like six seconds at yeah. a time. Yep. So the first one up, number four, Bakersfield, at number 23, Centennial. Both teams are ranked in the top 25. However, I don't think it either – I don't think these two teams are similar in any stretch of the imagination. No. Uh, Centennial at times has been great through the air, but they threw five interceptions last week. John, you saw all five of those. And when and you, nine in the last two weeks. Exactly. And so you look at who Centennial has played the last two weeks, Garces and – who did they play the week before? Liberty. Liberty. Was that Liberty? I think yeah. so, yeah. So I think the Liberty defense is much like the BHS defense where the secondary is so good. Yeah. And – I just don't know if Centennial is going to get up on this one. Um, I got BHS winning this one pretty big, 42-20. They're healthy. They're ready. And I don't think they're going to overlook Centennial whatsoever, knowing that they've got Liberty at home next week for the league title. Yeah, I mean, like you said, uh, or, I mean, nine picks in the last few games. Kyle Connolly, obviously a talented player, but when he gets under pressure, he panics. But he's young, so he'll grow out of that. But for now um, – I'll take BHS 48-13. I, I believe Centennial is going to be without DJ Adams this week. No, he is. Oh, he is going to play? Yeah, okay. he is eligible. There is no issues. He okay. had 10 catches, 125 yards again, two touchdowns. He's got 357 receiving yards the last two games. Yeah. He's going to be a big factor, but he's going to be keyed on. And he's probably going of to get course. double teamed all night. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. so Because there are enough playmakers in that secondary that they can put two on DJ and then leave everybody mm-hmm. else one-on-one coverage. Which yeah. means Centennial will try to do some screens and things like that to get him the ball, but... I mean, when you got Jacob Zyman and Andrew, yeah. Andrew Moreno out there, you know, this might be the big game for Keontae Bell here in, That's, on defense. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, uh, I'll take the drillers on this one. Drillers. Yep. All right, final game. Number 21, Garces at number three, Liberty. Garces, obviously one of the toughest schedules in – um, around in the central section and Liberty now seven and one on paper six and two on the field because the Mitch Viejo game was forfeited in favor of the Patriots mm-hmm. um, and this one will be favored in front of, for the Patriots. Uh, Garces has been playing very well defensively. Obviously they had the five interceptions last week. However, Liberty uh, is predicated on the run and they've yeah. got a great secondary um, in terms team. of. Hector Gonzalez throwing the ball when you think of offense. Sammy Stewart, 19 rushes last week, 220 yards. Yeah, that's and, good average. You know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they were able to, you know, kind of relax in the fourth quarter against Stockton on a 31-7 win, which is not as big of a blowout as I thought it would be. I think they're, But I also think that they're resting. Like, Stewart didn't even play in the second half against Frontier. Yeah, I mean, just score enough to get the job done. Yep, exactly. And so when you look at it, Liberty really is – Liberty and BHS are the class of this yep. league, class of Kern County, yep. and really the two of the top four teams in the central section this year. And like I said, with BHS, I don't think Liberty is going to overlook Garces this week. No. They're going to do what they need to do to win this one. I've got Liberty winning 35-14, and we set up the game of the year next week with Liberty at BHS, both teams 4-0 in league play. Yeah, well, I mean, we have the game of the year this week. Until next week, we have another game of the year. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm going to take a Liberty 30-24. That's far. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take a Liberty 30-24. Uh, Garces, uh, I mean, yeah, you look at the records, not – how they how good they are uh clearly i think they're the number three team in the league but like we've said all year liberty bhs just in another class of their own this year so uh liberty will take care of business and i think joseph campbell's had some of the same issues as kyle Connolly when you know he doesn't get enough blocking for him you get yeah. rushed into throws interceptions things like that so liberty's defensive line should be able to kind of control yeah. that offense and they should be able to control the ball on offense run the ball with sammy stewart so yeah best front seven in, in the city so yep. yep okay might be in the section too yeah yep. okay so there it uh there we have it it is week 10 our preview and predictions you can read about it online if you want to get more in depth on that at bigsoul.com uh our game night tomorrow night like i said is going to be at chef we're going to be live on the field after the generals take on kennedy next to 
uh, tomorrow night in a battle of two 8 no teams. Um, huge game. Love the atmosphere. And, guys, this is my first time watching Shafter at home. Ever? Ever. Wow. Huh? Yeah. I'm excited about it. So it'll be a lot it's of fun. It's a fun press box up yeah. there. Yeah. I'm really excited about it. A lot it. of characters. Lively. Yep. Exactly. I've heard nothing but that. But that. So, um, God, you know what? I think I'm lying. I think I've been there once. Whatever. Doesn't fit the narrative, Trevor. Yeah, it come on, uh, Trevor. <laughs> whatever. We're all, all about right. facts on this show. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> okay. With that, as always, thank you to our director, Diana Rodriguez. Thank you to Kitty head coach, Mari Milan, and seniors David Estrada and Johnny Carrillo for stopping by uh, ahead of their big game tomorrow. Obviously, thank you to Josh Bennett. Thank you to John Metis. You're welcome. And uh, appreciate it. And thank you guys to you, the viewers, as always. Appreciate you guys. This is B-Varsity Live, brought to you by Grapevine MSP and Motor City Buick GMC for Thursday, October 18th. Game night tomorrow at Shafter. I'm excited. Both of you guys are going to be there, right? Yeah. yeah. Maybe not you. Yeah. But we will be there. We'll be live tomorrow night. Tune in. Until then, I'm Trevor Horn. See you guys tomorrow night. Bye-bye.